The problem with the space shuttle program, there's two problems with it, okay? That it started and that it stopped. Basically, the space shuttle has kept the NASA Human Spaceflight Program alive for the past 30 years. And now it's being closed with nothing taking its place. The Bush Initiative, if it had been pursued seriously, the moon, Return to the Moon Initiative, was not the initiative that I would have chosen, okay, because I would have chosen humans to Mars as the initiative, but at least it had some objective. It would have been an advance on the shuttle program in that it would also preserve the team, but preserve it with having them accomplish something, although in my view, much less than we should expect from a $19 billion a year space agency. I mean, returning to the moon 50 years after we were there the first time, to me, does not live up to what NASA should be doing, but it was something. Okay. Obama came along, and I would have been totally delighted if he had canceled the Bush program and replaced it with the Humans to Mars program. And I could have accepted canceling it and replacing it with the Human to Near Earth Asteroid program. Okay, but he replaced it with nothing. To put sugar on the cyanide pill, he didn't cut NASA's budget. Now, she canceled the Bush initiative, she canceled the moon thrust without cutting NASA's budget. I'm quite proud of this. I say, see, NASA, we're not against you. We'll give you all the money. In fact, we'll give you 6% more money than Bush was authorizing for you. But not to develop heavy lift, not to develop the set of hardware needed to send people to the moon, land them on the moon, return, all that. But no, we'll give you $3 billion a year to continue to run the space station program through a decade when we are not launching any substantial payloads to it and not building any substantial payloads to it. And we'll give you several billion dollars a year to update the shuttle launch pads after the shuttle stops flying. And we will allow you to develop a capsule, but only one that goes down, not up, okay? And so forth. And so you get this nonsensical program. So this is setting up NASA for the kill because Okay, it'll go down now, but with these massive deficits, pretty soon the knives are going to come out. Intellectual capital is the true basis of the wealth of a nation. You could have every building in America knocked down, okay, as they were pretty much in Germany in 1945, okay, but if you have a population with intellectual capital, within 10 years it will all be rebuilt and the place will be prosperous. So this is, this is where our wealth comes from. You know, who were these technological entrepreneurs who created the, the computer revolution and the internet in the 1990s? 40-year-old types like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, as they were then. Okay, they were the 12-year-old little boy scientists of the 1960s. Okay, who got into science because of Apollo, and we doubled the number of our science graduates during the 60s precisely because of Apollo. And and the benefit to economic prosperity to national defense to public health and so forth of, of, of that is, is immeasurable and would dwarf the cost of the, the program. Five hundred years from now, if we do this, if we establish the firmest first human foothold on another world, which is really the beginning of humankind's history as a spacefaring multi-planet species, and which in my view will lead, if, if we do this, it will lead in time to the establishment of human beings and human, new branches of human civilization, not only on Mars, but on hundreds or thousands of planets orbiting nearby stars they're out there waiting for us. Um, then 500 years from now, when people look back at this time, they're not going to care what happened to the health plan. They're not going to care who won in Iraq. But they will remember this. This is what they'll remember. This is what will count. And if you can do something that will really count, then you should.